Hello, I'm Ian Hubert, and I'm going to talk a bit about some of the CG in Project London. And one of the most complicated models we made for the film is called the Goose, which is the ship that the main characters fly around in and live in. And one of the biggest things we wanted to do with the Goose was make it feel like a real location. Not like a, some sci-fi show where the inside is like a plywood set and the outside is like a miniature or something. We want a place the characters could jump in on and hang off the side, stuff like that. What we didn't know was how we were going to do it. For a long time I figured we'd just have to set up a lot of green boxes and do it all with CG or something. I even modeled the ship at one point. But a friend mentioned he knew someone who repaired old Vietnam War era Choctaw helicopters and said we might be able to film in one. We went to check out the hangar at a nearby airfield, and it was awesome! The helicopter had been sitting out in the desert, and it was all sun bleached and covered in dirt, and since the ship is supposed to be like an old meter car, it was perfect. These old helicopters had a neat design, where you had to get into the cockpit either by climbing up the outside or up through the seat from the inside. It was also made of magnesium, which bursts into flames when you fill it with powerful electric lights and burns everyone. No, that didn't happen, but I was worried. Uh, the great thing about filming on an actual helicopter was it grounded the whole thing in a ton of realism. It was an actual object the actors could actually sit on, and it was made of metal, and you could punch it, and it sounded awesome. There was a lot of tricks to pull it off, most of which involved pretty big green screens. A couple times we filmed the same scene in two places, one on location and the other in a hangar, then just edited them together. This worked a lot better than I thought it might. A lot of times, though, we ended up using CG. It all depended on us being able to make an exact CG replica of the helicopter in Blender 3D, which is free and open source and great, and you can download it and you should do it. It's fun. Uh, we took a lot of high-res photography of the helicopter on location, but how we were going to model it and map all the photos onto the geometry and all that, I had no idea. The answer came in the form of Dolph Wimbley, who was super talented and uh, was able to construct a model so precise that we were able to blend between it and the real thing mid-shot. There are half a dozen shots in the film where half the ship is CG and half is real, and the scene is almost invisible. After getting everything lined up, Dolph worked through a ton of revisions to make it look not quite so helicoptery. He added giant fin, engines, and some crazy complex landing gear stuff. He even put a little pinup gal on the fin. I had a couple shoddy engines to the side, and the ship was ready to fly. But where? We needed backgrounds. Our first thought was to take Google Maps images and put it on some basic 3D geometry in the computer and see how well that worked. We got a license, did some early tests, but it, it really didn't. We would have had to just spend way too much time modeling environments and still trying to get the atmosphere just right, and uh, considering the number of shots we had to tackle, it wasn't very feasible. So instead, we rented a helicopter! If we fall out, you think they'll be able to fly down below and catch me? Oh yeah, they do it in the movies all the time. We charted out a flight path and flew over it during a few different times of the day, and BAM! We had our aerial footage. Overall, the goose was really fun because we got to do so much of it for real, but it's a combination of all the different tricks and techniques that really bring it to life. In the end, it all comes down to creating an experience, and uh, so I really hope you enjoy the film. You guys have any problems being in our behind the scenes role? No. Real? Cool.